Hey guys, this is Kevin here at 5 in the morning again. Uh, I just woke up and uh, fed my dogs. Now I'm off to the gym. Doing exactly the same thing I did yesterday. Uh, worked out at 5. Really don't want to work out today and I didn't want to wake up or go to the gym. It's kind of rough, like my body hurts, it's cold. But waking up, I kind of told myself if I don't consistently do this, I'm probably never going to do it or it's not going to happen. And I just have to force myself to go. And I have to just also not listen to my body sometimes. It's good to uh, listen to your body if you're really pushing yourself and it's you know, about to break. I'm not really even close to that point right now. So um, I think I'm just being lazy or my body is just being lazy. And I just need to not listen. Um, would have been a lot easier just to go back to sleep for sure but luckily today um, looking at my schedule it's a pretty light schedule I'm not really doing a whole lot it's just literally all exams all day long um, so that also helps but that also shouldn't be an excuse for anything I find it a lot of times I do make excuses for uh, not going to the gym because I know I'm going to have like a hard day or something at work but I feel like I need to like stop justifying that that's not a great reason and I need to take care of myself first that's for sure because if you wait for the stars to align and for everything to go right it probably will never <laughs> and more likely than not you're not going to get a whole lot done so I need to start doing this I need to start just kind of challenging myself and not giving in to my I guess immediate reaction when I wake up because I'm sure most people like they don't wake up super energetic and uh, excited to tackle the day I'm sure most people are actually pretty tired but they just tell themselves they need to go the easy thing about going to the gym is that it's the same people every single time every day same people show up uh, and so we just you know if, if they can do it I can definitely do it I have no excuse and it is nice being around people that disciplined, right? Because it's it's kind of rare. But we're gonna. Sorry, people are so weird. Like, I don't know if you guys have this issue, but for some reason here in Vegas, nobody knows how to do a stop sign. Um, it's obviously like whoever goes to the stop sign first goes. <laughs> but people will go to the stop sign and then they'll just wait for you to go, or like they'll be at the stop sign. And they're still waiting and you're like, oh, are you going to go? And then they just don't go. Um, I don't know why they do that. Or maybe they think they're being like courteous or safe, but really like they're just being confusing. And there's a chance that we both just go at the same time because we get so frustrated, <laughs> you know? But yeah, like I think whoever stops at the stop sign first just needs to go first. Um, and then whoever's in that same path, like more or less at the same time, just needs to go also so that they can just, you know, clear that line. But I don't know. People are strange. Um, but yeah, I don't know. going back to my point. So, yeah, the same people show up every single day. Um, I have really no excuse to not go to the gym. Um, if they can do it, I can do it. And I think most of the time it's just me making up excuses in my head like, I'm too tired, I got too much to do, I, uh, have a long day at work. I need to just stop making those excuses and I just need to go. And figure everything out later because like i said in my last video right uh, a lot of times your patients they really aren't going to be they are really aren't going to be there for you when you get sick or when something goes wrong with you um uh, but they expect you to be there for them right and so i think what's important is just taking care of your health at the end of the day and i know everything i'm saying and doing at these videos are probably going to be really slow for a while just because I'm kind of going through the basics and getting my thoughts out there. But everything I'm doing is super unsexy, nothing special whatsoever. It's just very, very little consistent things. And those little things will add up and the culmination of all those things will be what's exciting, right? I, if you were to film me like a year or two ago, I don't think anything exciting was going on at all. <laughs> And so it would just be a year or two of just, like, really boring stuff. So there was, like, years that led up to this as well. It wasn't just, um, you know, like, this is, what is it, like, 
my life is already exciting. I don't know. Like, we'll get into more stuff. But uh, no, it's like a lot of years. I've been in Vegas for two years, and the first year, really nothing happened. There wasn't really anything exciting. We did buy our house, and that's a whole other story. Uh, but yeah, like pretty much, I just did dentistry and was trying to be really good at dentistry. My second year, you know, I was looking into buying a dental office, didn't really work. And then I was looking into a startup, which I might talk more about, like the startup process and looking at buying a dental office and all that. But um, again, like neither of those worked out. Um, and I signed a lease sometime last year, like close to this time. And the landlord never actually signed it. And he just waited like a whole year until now and he still hasn't even started building the building and it was a really good location and it was a really good deal right and so i was like man this is, a, this is gonna be big but the longer i did dentistry honestly like the more i realized that, you know you guys know of course because you guys are watching but i just realized i don't want to do dentistry and i don't want to deal with dental problems because they're really, they kind of drain on you. It's a lot of really small problems that really just add up over time. And it just gets frustrating because it's like you never make any progress. It's like the second you do something somewhat big, you have a small problem that drags you behind and you have to spend all your time and energy dealing with. Um, and then no one else really seems to be able to deal with it for you. I, I don't know if that's just my experience. Um, I'm sure at some point in time you have an office manager, you have some good staff, and they can figure it out for you. But in my case, uh, I just don't have that right now. Like currently, I work with a lot of assistants that are more or less they just like they work part time. You know, like they work a few days here, a few days there, and so it's like really hard to train them. And I have a patient the other day where I kind of left my assistant to do uh, a temporary so like she put on the temporary crown and this person's about to go on vacation for a while right and so it should be it's, it seems pretty simple right you just put the temporary cement on you put it on the tooth it's been on for weeks like it's not going to come off and uh, you know if, what would you know like the next day the temporary came off you know and it's just kind of like those little things that I'm like, you know, it's, I'm not going to be mad or I'm not going to like blame anyone for it. But it, sometimes it's just like if I don't do it, it doesn't get done properly. And, you know, I can train everyone, but I need time to train people. And also it's hard when people are only working like a day or two or three a week. So they're not even there half the time. So you're like training twice as many people because you have so many half people. Um yeah so it's like it makes it even worse for sure and there's so many little details that you have to know right like it's like you can't use this at this time you can't do this at this time you can't do this movement at this time you can't do like this and that and that you gotta wait this much minutes it's like so many little tiny details that like, I know because I've been doing this for so many years and um, I've just learned from a lot of people like another thing I do too is when I learn things, I don't learn things at normal speed. I don't watch or listen to anything at normal speed. I listen to it at least one and a half times, if not two times the speed. So then I get through like almost twice as much stuff in the same amount of time. But yeah, like even all of that, even after learning so much so quickly, uh, you know, I just feel like I still end up facing the same problems every day. And my whole career is dependent on like, good assistance and good assistance staying and you know I I think I can make a good working environment but at the same time there's a lot of factors that are out of your control and I see it on the dental Facebook pages all the time where it's like staff will quit left and right and sometimes it's a leadership issue uh, but sometimes there's just like circumstances where they found a better paying job they don't like dentistry either they're moving uh, you know, family health problems. There's all kinds of problems like that are just not related to you or your office at all, right? But you know, I'm kind of glad I don't own an office right now. It seems like a lot of headache dealing with all that staffing right now. Um, 
and I don't think I will ever own a dental office at this point. I think the only case where I would own a dental office is if things were so bad that like we literally could not make money doing anything else. And I find that hard to believe because with what we're moving into, it's very, um, I don't want to say general. I mean, I guess it's like it can apply to everyone, but it's something that everyone needs and it's a very, I guess like universal skill. Right, like if you don't know how to run a business, you pretty much are playing life on hard mode. And so, what I think is moving to business will actually be the best decision that we make because we can help anyone at any level, at any skill, right? And so, in the future, that will actually broaden our prospects and our ability to do things thing with dental is it's such a local skill i mean there are some dentists that are internationally known that are famous like celebrity dentists uh, but those are like far and few in between most dentists are not ever going to be that uh, but as a business person or like a business coach or consultant you can do that from anywhere you know you can do it on through a phone call you might have to fly to people sometimes but obviously you can charge up like a lot of money to do that um, whereas dentistry, it's like you open up a practice and you're most likely going to be seeing just people within the area. Most people are not going to be driving from far away to see you. That's the majority. Most people really only go see the dentist like within a three mile radius of them. And I was just talking to my neighbor about this as well. He was just saying that he doesn't mind if the dentist is a little far away because he doesn't really even go to the dentist that frequently. Um, he only goes, you know, like obviously twice a year for the cleanings and maybe some work here and there, but he doesn't need a whole lot of work. And so for him, it just doesn't make sense to, to travel somewhere. Right. So like, let's say I want him as a client, I'd have to build my office right next to him. And I'd only be able to really serve the people in that immediate vicinity. Whereas if I'm a business coach and he has business, which he does, you know, I can be across the world and we could still work together. Right, and no one has to go anywhere or do or do anything. Like, I don't have to drive to work every morning. Uh, I can just hop on a call. I could be in like, let's say, I don't know, let's say Dubai or something. I could be in Dubai, and hop on a call, and still get my work done while enjoying my life. Right. And so that's the that's the direction that we want to move into, and I think we're we're getting there. Um, this last week alone. I don't know if it has anything to do with the Pluto thing, but this last week alone, we had two people interested um, in our service. And so we're definitely working them up, uh, trying to figure out how we can help them and figure out how we can fix their issues. I think it's very fixable. And, you know, the, the interesting thing is for both of these people, it's like, you know, they actually just potentially might need multiple, uh, multiple, versions of our service right, or multiple like people right and so it's actually like when you get one client it's not just like one it could be like one client with multiple employees which kind of helps um reduce the amount of overhead and reduce the amount of uh i guess hassle of you know doing everything yeah i mean big things are happening we're we're gonna start moving sorry it's like Driving is kind of distracting because everyone's doing all kinds of random things. There's a guy running in the middle of the parking lot. I don't know why. Um, but, yeah. All right. I'm going to cut it out here. Thanks for listening, guys. Sorry for that last part. It's, uh, yeah. We'll talk.